killers. You know, they were killers. Uh, they, they, you know, John was a good guy. I, I had a better relationship with John than Charlie. I really didn't have a relationship with Charlie. Just a low goodbye. But I had a relationship with John. I did business with John. And uh, they beat the shit out of me. They were kicking me and punching me. I had a big cut over them. Because back then, that's what they used to do. I had a big cut over my eye. And it was all blood. And then, and then a squad car pulled up. Tens of thousands of dollars uh, were cars, were stolen cars. Uh, you know, I was making money hand over foot with cars. You know, we had, we had, I had two chop shops of my own. So I keep getting a question about who proposed Paul Castellano. That was long before my time. Um, if I had to take an educated guess, I would say it was Carl Gambino, his cousin. It was probably straightened out before him. You know, they come from a long line of, of mafia, you know, from back from Sicily. Um, but I would say if I had to take an educated guess, it was probably his cousin Carl. But uh, I'm going to ask Sammy that question because that's a good question to put towards, put to Sammy. I'm going to ask Sammy that question. He may know. So people keep asking me about Charlie and John Coniglia. You know, I knew them both very well. I know them since I'm a kid. They were both made men in the Gambino family. They were both killers. You know, John was one of the shooters at the Paul Castellano hit. Charlie was a psychopath. You know, used to dissolve bodies in barrels of acid. And that they, they had a junkyard on Fountain Avenue in East New York. Um, you know, um, I know John Coniglia really never wanted to get straightened out. He used to drive a motorcycle, but, you know, they forced him to get straightened out because he did a lot of work for the family. Um, they made a lot of money. They invented the, the tag job back in the day for people that know anything, know about any kind of auto theft. Uh, back in the day, they used to tag cars. It's hard to do it now because the stamps are inside the, the in, actually inside the engines and everything in the, in the engine blocks. But back then, Back in the day, it was just a metal strip with a tag on it, and they uh, figured out a way how to tag cars, and they, like, literally invented the tag job. They made a lot of money. They made a lot of money selling heroin, um, and they were killers. You know, they were killers. Uh, they, they, You know, John was a good guy. I, I had a better relationship with John than Charlie. I really didn't have a relationship with Charlie. Just a little goodbye, but I had a relationship with John. I did business with John. With credit cards, you know, we, uh, we he had a... He was getting these really dynamite credit cards from Wall Street, and he was selling them to me, and I was banging them out. So I made a lot of money with him. Um, he always gave me money for my father for his commissary. He loved my father. Uh, he always, always, always handed me money for my father's commissary whenever I saw him. But you know, they were they were killers. You know, they were killers. I testified at Charlie's trial. You know, Charlie killed my friend Michael in front of the Blue Fountain Diner over an argument. You know, because that's what kind of person Charlie was, dangerous. Um, and, uh, you know, John's home now. He did 30 years in prison for heroin with Jeannie Gotti. So, uh, you know, he's in the street now, you know, um, and I hope he's doing well. <laughs> that's going on. You know, when, when I was in the street, you know, we really, I never fucked around with Wall Street. You know what I mean? I don't really know anybody that really did. I mean, now that's it's a big it became more popular with the mob later on, you know, like at the end of my mob career, it got, you know, got more popular, you know, but uh, I don't really know much about it, but I'm, you know, they, they, I know they were doing business with guys on Wall Street, but, um, you know, I know Tony Lee had a portfolio. I know that he had a really good portfolio, a blue, 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 blue chip stocks he had. Tony Lee, like his father was into the stock market and, uh, but um, he's the only one I knew that really was into the stock market. But uh, yeah, that came later on, you know, them playing with the stock market, with penny stocks and all that stuff, you know. So people are asking me what my take on The Sopranos last episode. I thought it sucked. The ending sucked. Not only did I think it sucked, this is what it, it's a funny story with that. I have a really funny story with that. So when that season started, I had decided to cooperate. So the feds had me living in a safe house in Pennsylvania the night of the last episode. So now I'm in this 
safe house in Pennsylvania and I'm watching the last episode of The Sopranos. And at the end, the very, very end, when he's in the luncheonette and all them people are there, I think he's going to get killed because, you know, there's other crews in the diner, right, waiting for him. And I think I say, oh, they're going to, this, he's going to get killed, right? So I figured at the end he was either going to get killed or he was going to cooperate. That's what, how I thought the last episode was going to end. I figured either he was going to cooperate or he was going to get killed. So now the last episode's on, and I'm in the safe house in Pennsylvania watching it. And now the end comes, and they're coming, they're going to that restaurant or whatever it was, luncheonette. And now I go, oh, he's not going to cooperate. He's going to get clipped because all these crews are there. And then all of a sudden, the TV goes blank. I thought something happened to my TV. I go, what the hell? Right? I jump up and I run to the phone because I know my wife now. My wife's in Comac, Long Island. I know she's watching it too. I call her up to see if something. I call. I go, my TV just shut off. What happened? She goes, so did mine. It just went off. I, and I said, what the hell? And then I realized that that was the ending. I said, what are they kidding me? I said, that's crazy. What kind of ending is that? I actually thought my TV went out. Like I lost my 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 you know my connection. And I I picked up the phone and I called. I said, my TV just went out. What happened? And she goes, mine too. That must be the end. It went blank. I go, and I, and I was like, what the fuck was kind of ending was that? But now I heard he came out with Chase, the writer, came out with that Tony dies. That was, it was meant to, that he just didn't want to show him get killed in front of his family. But the ending was he died. He got killed in the, in the restaurant. That was the ending. That was what we were supposed to get out of that. It would have been better if they would have shown it happened, you know, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so I actually thought my TV blanked out living in a safe house. So, you know, it was crazy. Couldn't breathe, always heavy breath, right? Oh, if you listen to him, he's always breathing heavy. He's always eating something, always picking on something. He comes down with his bad throat. You know, it, it reminds me of my father because my father was the same way. He would come out of the bedroom with his bathroom on, on open the the door, drink orange juice right out of the bottle, eat cold meatballs. You know, my father would go in the refrigerator, pick a cold meatball, just eat it for breakfast. You know, like, that's why I always believed that they definitely, you know, were around mob guys for that script. You know, I mean, not everything of it was true. Like, listen, he would have never been able to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you know, not on the level of boss, not back in the day. He would have got, he would have went. You know what I mean? He would have went. But other than that, it was pretty, pretty realistic. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was pretty realistic. I mean, you know, after a while, how many times are you going to keep, you know, how many times are you going to, you know, cover for the guy? How many times, are, you know, like that made sense to me at the end, you know, that that Christopher got killed, that he did that, you know? Well, not only because he was on drugs, you know, he just kept on fucking up. He just kept on messing up. Yeah. And at that point, you know, he didn't really trust anybody character anyway yeah i chop yeah. shops oh i made i made tens of thousands of dollars uh with cars with stolen cars uh you know i was making money hand over foot with cars you know we had we had i had two chop shops of my own i had you know we, we were stealing car we were stealing 10 cars a night you know i actually used to go out with them and steal the cars you know we would go up to queen's boulevard where all them apartment buildings are and just steal 10 cars a night you know, and take the, I mean, we were making crazy money. I even had, um, you know, uh, with Nikki Carrazzo, who was a captain in the Gambino family, he had a lot of guys around him that were into car business, and I would sell them drop doors. I We would steal, sometimes, we, we wouldn't even chop the cars ourselves. We would steal 10 cars a night, and I would bring them to a guy around Nikki, and I used to sell him the stolen the cars for $100 a car. We were making 1000 a night. And then I would meet Nikki on a Saturday, at the at the Knights of Columbus Club on Pacific Street, and his guys would pay me, and I would go there and get you know five six thousand dollars every Saturday, you know, and 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 whack it up with my crew, you know, it was big business, big business, uh, big big business, especially guys that had the junkyards that had the crushes like Carmine the Bull, you know, John Gotti's son-in-law, he was big into the cars. Uh, there was guys around JoJo Carraza, they had junkyards, they were big into the cars. Um, it was just big business. You know, I had two chop shops uh, myself sometime once 
at one point I had three chop shops, you know, uh, going. So, you know, we were selling front ends and everything. It was just big money. Today, I don't, today it's a different game out there. All these cars are computerized. You know, back then, you know, my cousin, you know, we had a tool and we started a car in, in a matter of a minute. And the car was tooled out and running and we would just get in and pull out and go. Big money. It was big money back then. Could you explain to the lay person what's a chop shop and like the process? What a chop shop is a, is the garage where stolen cars are brought to and they're taken apart and the parts are put on vans and driven to auto body shops or junkyards that sell auto parts. Basic, more more junkyards than auto body shops, but we did do business with a lot of auto body shops that would give us orders and say they would need a front end of a of a of a of a regal, uh, and we would go out and get the re like you know we would take orders like one guy would want a regal and another guy would want a Riviera and another guy would want a Mustang and you know and we would go out and fill the orders and sell them what they want and then take it to the chop shop take it apart like if one guy wanted the front end of a, of a regal. We go get a regal. We 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 take it to the chop shop. We take the front end off and we put it on a van and deliver it. And then uh, we dump the carcasses all over the place. I even got arrested doing it. We were dumping the carcasses of the cars in the swamps by Kennedy Airport. There's swamps. I don't know if everybody's aware of that, but there's serious swamps behind Kennedy Airport around Jamaica Bay. And we used to take the carcasses back there and and deep six them in the swamp. And one day we were back there doing it. And believe it or not, the sanitation police have their own, the sanitation department has their own like security force that patrols back there for people that are dumping stuff. And they rolled up on us and they arrested me and they charged me with 15 stolen vehicles because there was 15 cars submerged in the water and they charged me. I was the only one that got arrested because everybody ran away. And they, so everybody I was with scattered. And I got caught. I was the only one that got caught. Lucky me. I was always lucky that way. And I got arrested by them. Matter of fact, they beat the shit out of me too. They kicked me in my face, my head. I had a big cut over my eye. I had a white shirt and I was all full of blood. They would beat the shit out of me. They wanted to know who was with me. And I didn't tell them. Of course, back then, I didn't say shit to them. And uh, they beat the shit out of me. They were kicking me and punching me. I had a big cut over them. Because back then, that's what they used to do. I had a big cut over my eye. And it was all blood. And then, and then a squad car pulled up back there. And they saw all the blood coming out of my eye and everything. And they, and they, and they took me and handcuffed and put me in their squad car to get me away from these sanitation guys that were kicking the shit out of me. And they put me in the squad car. And they took me in. And they booked me and all that. And I got charged with with, uh, you know, uh, Grand Theft Auto, you know, all that. And they put these 15 cars that they found. They put all the cars on me. And um, I wound up taking a plea to possession of stolen property. I copped out to an A misdemeanor and I paid a, I think I paid a $2,500 fine or something. For it. And that was the end of that. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, you know, and in the future, you know, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to Michael Francis and Sammy the Bull more often on my Patreon. So, you know, become a member, tune in and, you know, get access to them and me. Um, I'll be going on their show. They'll be coming on my show. Um, so tune in.